After maxing a level 3 skiller at the very end of 2023, I've decided to dive into uncharted territory by making my first ever true main account. I did have a main account in the past, but the farthest I've progressed was the Dragon Slayer and Monkey Madness quests. I've never gotten a fire cape, never did barrows, definitely didn't do any GWD, and I haven't even done desert treasure before. So forget what you know about my past accounts and that I haven't even touched a combat set since 2014, and join me while I play OSRS in its intended fashion for the very first time ever. This is Maxing a Main. What's up guys, welcome back to episode 9 of Maxing a Main. At the end of the last video, I said that we we're going to be getting some skilling outfits in this video, but upon looking into the requirements of what I need for each outfit, we don't really have too many options other than the fishing outfit, which is a very good thing because of this account's apparent awesome luck. In the last episode, we managed to get the fishing boots. Our very first game and we got the boots, I still can't believe it, honestly. But just to put in perspective with the stats that we currently have, we can't get the rogues outfit because we need level 50 thieving. We can't get the pyromancer outfit because we got to get that at winter toad and we can't even do that yet. The farming outfit we could start getting at level 34 farming, which we also don't have. The construction outfit we can't get until we're at least level 20 construction, but it's not really worth going for until we're level 70 construction. We also can't do the rune crafting outfit because we need to do temple of the eye and get that from guardians of the rift, which again, we don't have the level to obtain we can't get the prospector's outfit until we can do mother load mine at level 30 mining so really if i want to fulfill the promise of getting a skilling outfit in this video it has to be the fishing outfit this skilling set takes roughly four to four and a half hours of fishing trawler in order to obtain so i'm going to be here for quite a while unless this crazy luck continues but in the meantime we are going to be getting a little bit of construction xp so i'm really curious to see what our construction level is going to be by the end of this grind we currently have level 11 construction, so I guess getting the fishing outfit out of the way early is a good thing because it's going to let us save some time grinding early construction levels. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention that we are also going to be getting fishing levels here. I forgot that you get fishing XP here. We're currently level 19 fishing, and as you could have guessed, I'm also very curious to see how many fishing levels we're going to get during this grind as well. Finally, we got another piece, the angler top. It took forever remember when i said that this account has good luck earlier in the video well here we are with level 31 fishing almost level 32 and 27 construction i have been here for 21 fishing trawlers and we finally got the second piece i mean i guess it is the second piece so it's not too bad of a grind so far but yeah we got the first piece in 20 fishing trawler pools not sure what the average is if i figure it out or if it's on the wiki i'll put it on the screen right now this is taking a lot longer than i thought my hand is cramping insanely bad been clicking like this for five minutes straight every six minutes and i've been here for about two hours so i will see you guys the next piece hopefully it is soon and nothing yet again turns out i'm pretty much on drop rate only because we got that first drop at the very first fishing trawler if we didn't get that we'd be going pretty dry right now we're on our 32nd fishing trawler and we are running out of swamp pace so i gotta go to the grand exchange and buy some more real quick and then we'll get back to more grinding all right and that's fishing trawler number 36 and we still don't have a piece everyone that we do from here on out will be at dry until we get the next drop but yeah, 36 fishing trawler down, an unknown amount to go. Finally, we got the angler waders. Very, very nice. And it was on our 44th fishing trawler. We only got one more item to go, being the angler hat. And once again, we are going dry. Each drop is a 1 in 12 chance. That means on average, we should have had the last piece at 48 fishing trawlers. Now we're at 49, so hopefully it comes in soon. Not having too bad of a time though, just watching some Netflix on the side, but my wrist wants to fall off, so hopefully it comes soon. And there it is, the angler hat. We finally got the whole set, and at the same time we got level 40 fishing. Very, very nice. You now catch lobsters, and doing all of this fishing trawler brought us up to level 35 construction as well. That's way higher than I thought it was going to be. I was expecting it to be like maybe level like 22. But yeah, 35 is amazing. And it only took us 51 fishing trawlers. And because it takes five minutes in the fishing trawler and one minute in between each game, that makes it 5.1 hours of fishing trawler gameplay in order to get the whole set. It honestly wasn't too bad besides the wrist pain. It honestly really kills. But I'm happy we got the full set. And uh, let's try it on real quick. And look at that. Ugly as ever. 
I always thought the zombie gloves look good with this outfit as well. I can actually show you guys what that looks like real quick with the Fashionscape plug-in. There we go. Yeah, I think it looks decent. It actually doesn't look as good as I thought it did. <laughs> Hey everybody, meet Joe. He is the winner of last video's giveaway. If you guys missed it, in the last video, I asked you guys to guess what my favorite quest was back in the day when I was a 12 year old boy. Then I gave the hint that the reward from the quest was only useful in very niche situations, but to a 12 year old that looked really cool. And the first person that gave the correct answer was Joe. And the answer was the Elemental Workshop Part 1. I love the Elemental Shield and the Elemental Workshop Part 1 was the very first quest that I ever did without using a guide from Rune Age. HQ. Figured it all out on my own and I really, really enjoyed the quest. It's super simple and it's not really good to be honest. But hey, when you're a 12 year old discovering new things in a game for the first time, it's always really cool. So congratulations, Joe. Here is your two mil. I know two mil is not a lot, but I'm basically broke on all of my accounts. I transferred this two mil over specifically for the giveaway and the money is now yours. Hopefully two mil helps you out in some way. But now that the fishing trawler is finally done, I want to show you guys the goal of season one of this series. And the reason I say season one is because this account is going to have a ton of different episodes with both little goals and big goals. So I thought I could divide this series up into seasons where season one is going to be like early game. Season two is going to be mid game. Season three is going to be higher level content. And then season four, I guess I will consider it like kind of end game style content, but I'll figure all that out down the line. But for season one, I made this goals sheet. So in order to complete all of season one, one. The items and unlocks that I want to have are going to be fairy rings, climbing boots, a graceful set, the fishing outfit, an Ava's device, already cape one. I want the ability to wield dragon weapons and I want the ability to use the hot air balloon transportation system. The quests that I want to complete in season one are going to be all of the free to play quests, death plateau, dig site, holy grail, death to the Dorgashun, lost city, fairy tale part one, monkey madness, wanted, animal magnetism, and enlightened journey. And regarding the stats, I want to have at least level 30 base stats in all of my skills. As you guys already know, we've done some of the stuff already, being the graceful set, the arty cape one, now the fishing outfit, and we have completed all of the free to play quests. So once all of this is completed, I'm going to wrap it all up into one big video, and then we're going to be able to start on the season two goals. Not sure what they're going to be yet, but I'll figure it out whenever this season is done. So yeah, those are the maxing a main season one goals. I think I have everything I want to unlock on this list. If I forgot something, I'll just add it later. But for now, as you guys know, the most optimal way to play early game is to do quests. And the first quest we're going to do, it's not on the list, but I want to get done Tower of Life because I want to have the Creatures Creation minigame unlocked. I've never done it before. I don't even know if it's worth really unlocking, but we're going to have to get it done eventually for the quest cape in the future. So yeah, let's go get it done. All right, and the Tower of Life has been started. And there we go. We now have the Builder's shirt, hard hat, Builder's boots, and Builder's trousers. The fact that this is not the construction skilling outfit is very, very sad. I really like the look of this. It's super unique. And if you didn't know, this actually has a built-in emote. If you do the beckon emote with this outfit equipped, it looks like this. Oh my, Rune Lane is such a lifesaver. I don't know how long this would have taken me if I was just reading a guide from Rune HQ like back in the day. Oh my lord. It's a homunculus. Why do I low-key feel bad for the homunculus? Just got summoned out of the blue into a cage. That's the saddest thing. Oh my god. Oh my god. These people are insane. It has no soul. It has no worth. He's literally screaming in a cage. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my. Oh god. Dude, what did I just allow these people to do? This is genuinely kind of sad. What? I've never done this quest before, so I did not know what to expect, but that is not at all what I was expecting. Tell you what though, the homunculus kind of looks cool. All right, the Tower of Life has been completed, giving us two quest points, 1,000 construction XP, 500 crafting XP, and 500 thieving XP, as well as creature creation access, giving us a total of 79 quest points, which brought us up to level 14 crafting and level 22 thieving. Oh, and level 36 construction. Now, the guide said that I could bring a raw chicken and a raw swordfish for the achievement diary in Artie, but I'm not sure exactly what to do with it. Um, let me see. All right, so we use the raw chicken and then the swordfish, and then I guess I just activate it. 
And there it is. Level 46 is higher level than I thought. Maybe I could just use melee protection. I'll be fine. Didn't bring any combat gear because I didn't think I was going to really need it. I thought this thing was going to be a low level. But look at this thing. I've never seen anything like it. What happens when I examine it? What does it say? Definitely not a chicken or a swordfish. Ooh, nice. We got a genie random event. Let's grab that lamp real quick. And there we go. The sword chick has been defeated. Let's turn off our prayer. And what are we going to use this lamp on? I think we're going to go with Slayer because, you know, we haven't really trained Slayer yet. And I could get a Slayer level from this, so let's do it. Lamp gave us 120 Slayer XP and brought us up to level 13 Slayer. And killing that sword chick got us... Blah, blah, blah. And killing that sword chick... What am I saying? And, and killing that sword chick completed a medium task in the arty... In the arty achievement diaries. Very, very nice... Not sure if I'm ever going to need to come back here for anything, but I still think that they should make this outfit a recolor for the construction outfit from Mahogany Homes. Just looks way cooler and way more unique, and it's not nearly as ugly as that hideous construction outfit. But anyway, the next quest on the list that I want to get done is Death Plateau, which should get us the climbing boots, which will allow us to check something off of our Season 1 goals. And Death Plateau has been started. And Death Plateau has been completed, giving us one quest point, 3,000 attack XP, a set of steel claws, and the ability to make claws while smithing. And the next quest that we are going to tackle is going to be Merlin's Crystal. We're going to need to unlock the Excalibur eventually, so we might as well get it done. Merlin's Crystal has been started. I've actually done this quest on my skiller before, so this is going to be my second time ever doing this quest, and I honestly don't remember too much. It's pretty weird that Sir Mordred is one of the newer styled NPCs. I honestly have no idea what he looked like before 2007 came out, but I am kind of curious to know what he used to look like. And the Excalibur has been achieved. Look at this ugly beauty. This thing is so ugly, but it is so beautiful at the same time. It's like so retro-like. Oh wow, I was going to comment that you could see Merlin walking around in here, and then whenever you go upstairs, he's trapped in the crystal, because that's how it always used to be. I remember doing that in my Skiller video, but it appears like they updated it so that he no longer appears in this room if you did not complete the quest, which is very kind of weird thing to update since it's been around for so long. But something that I doubt they updated is, here's what Merlin looks like with this cool bendy wizard hat and everything. And then, one second here, once you go down... Oh, he's still not here. Huh. Maybe we have to finish the quest first. Merlin's Crystal has been completed, giving us a whopping six quest points and the Excalibur. Now, let's go back upstairs and see if we can see Merlin now. It's so weird. He's not here. It's very interesting. Am I just misremembering? I don't think I am. But anyway, after that failure, let's go to the next quest, which is going to be Murder Mystery. I have never done this quest before in my life. And to be honest, I've never even heard of it. So check this out. All right, all we need is one pot, which we have in the bank, and it should give us some nice crafting XP. Okay, I guess this is where we start Murder Mystery. It's just right where we left off, really. Realized when I got there, I forgot the pot from my bank, so I had to turn around, but looks like we have a mime random event. Let's see what we get this time. And we unlocked the glass box emote. Very nice, very nice. We only need three more emotes to complete the set. And easy peasy lemon squeezy murder mystery has been completed. Giving us three quest points, 1,406 crafting XP, and 2,000 GP. Bringing our crafting level up to 18. The next quest we're going to do is going to give us even more XP, but not in crafting. We're going to be doing the Grand Tree. Okay, the Grand Tree has been started. Quest Helper told me to bring some runes for safe spotting, so I did. I only had 43 death runes. Hopefully that's enough. I'm not sure what I have to kill, to be honest with you. But just in case, I brought some chaos runes as a backup. What the hell is this guy talking about? Deconia. All right, I guess the thing I have to attack is a black demon level 172. I only brought a couple swordfish because it said it could be safe spotted. So hopefully it highlights the safe spot because I have no clue where it is. Does it? No, it doesn't. Oh, yes, it does. Nice. Now let's hope I have enough runes. Hey, we just got a hit points level, level 38. And we have defeated the black demon with only seven casts left. Pretty sure this is the last step. Just got to figure out which root has the stone behind it. And there it is. The rock has been found. And I forgot to pick it up. Hold on. There we go. And here we go. Okay, finally. 
Grand Tree has been completed, giving us five quest points, 18,400 attack XP, 7,900 agility XP, as well as 2,150 magic XP, and the ability to use gnome gliders. Bringing our total quest points up to 94, and our attack, oh, our agility level up to 71, which is very cool, and our attack up to 47, and our combat level up to 53. Now I have to look at this ugly level 71 agility until we decide to train it again, which shouldn't be for a good while. And the next quest we are going to do is one I have never done before in my entire life. We're finally getting to the point where we're doing quests that I have not done in the past. And this one is going to be Rag and Bone Man 1. It says it's short and it came out in 2006, but I guess we'll see how short it really is. And Rag and Bone Man 1 has been started. I'm not sure if this is the quest that gives you that bone sack on his back or if it's Rag and Bone Man Part 2, but it is cool to do this quest because I've never done it before and it has kind of a cool reward. Maybe? <laughs> I don't know. I guess we'll see. Honestly, just polishing these bones is taking longer than it took me to actually get all the bones. You can swap worlds to make it happen instantly, but it's really only like a two second difference per bone by the time you load into the world. But anyway, we now have all of the polished bones that we need. And I think this should be the last step of the quest. And there we go. Rag and Bone Man 1 gave us 500 cooking XP, 500 prayer XP, and one quest point, bringing our total quest points up to 95. And while we're here, we might as well start Rag and Bone Man Part 2. It says to start this quest, you gotta kill bats south of the odd old man. But I've killed five bats so far, and there's the drop. Wow, mid sentence. Okay, never mind then. Oh, it automatically starts Rag and Bone Man Part 2. Usually you have to accept the quest before it starts, but I guess not in this case. But anyway, the next quest on the list is going to be Nature Spirit. I think I might have done this quest a long time ago on my old main account, but I'm not sure. I barely did any quests on that account anyway. And to start this quest, it appears that we need a Silver Sickle, which I do not have. So we have to go back to the Grand Exchange and pick one up and then run all the way back here. So excited. And Nature Spirit has been started. I could be wrong, but I think this quest gives you the Blessed Sickle which lets you spawn mushrooms. And I didn't do this on my old main account. I did this in RuneScape 3 for a money maker back in like 2010. But other than that, I haven't touched this in old school. I didn't realize I was gonna have to kill three ghasts. I would have brought my rune scimitar in that case, but we should be good with the blessed sickle, even though I could only max hit a five. Never really noticed how creepy these ghasts really are. Not sure if it's because of the HD is making them look so creepy, but geez Louise, man. And there we go. Nature Spirit has been completed, giving us a lot more rewards than I thought we were going to get. Wasn't expecting to get 3,000 crafting XP, 2,000 hit points XP, and 2,000 defense XP, and 2 quest points. Almost at 100 quest points. Finishing that quest brought us up to 23 crafting and 39 defense. Only one level away from being able to wear rune armor. Since we're here, we might as well stock up on some Mortmeyer fungus. Then we could sell it in the Grand Exchange for a little bit of cash. How much do these go for? 273 GP each, not the best to be honest, but it's better than nothing. Might as well stock up real quick. Oh, I didn't notice it uses prayer points in order to bless things, but we have almost a full inventory, which made us 5k, not bad. Not really the world's best money maker, but I figured I'd give it a try. But anyway, the next quest on the list is going to be Ghosts Ahoy. I know for sure I haven't done that quest before, and I think it gives you access to the Ectophile Teleport, which is pretty good. I've seen it used in videos. Not really sure what it's useful for, but um, yeah, let's go get Ghost Ahoy done. Oh my, we need a lot of stuff from the Grand Exchange. All right, Ghost Ahoy has been started. I don't have any Ecto tokens, so we're going to have to get them with the prayer thing I don't really know how to do. But decided to invest in Lava Dragon Bones, since I think this gives improved prayer XP as opposed to regularly burying them. It cost me about 65,000 GP for 8 Lava Dragon Bones. That's crazy. And the Giant Lobster has been defeated at the same time, giving us level 42 magic. No real unlocks here. The next one will be, I guess, Water Blast at level 47. And the Camelot Teleport at level 45. Whoa, look at this dude. The only guy I've ever seen in game holding a katana. That's sick. I was going to wield the signed oak bow to see what it looked like if it looked any different. But I can't because we need five range and we still have level three range. That's so sad. Yo, I'll tell you what. This is kind of cool too. 
I really like this quest. It's super different than the normal ones that I'm used to doing. I'm not sure if this goes away after the quest is done, so I made a second one just in case. Looks pretty weird on your worn equipment slot with the bed sheet just chilling on the head slot. That's funny. Now we have the cooler looking version of the Ghost Speak Amulet. Super cool. I really, I really do like this quest. It's really weird. It's a lot longer than I was expecting it to be, but it has a lot of cool stuff. Nice. And Ghost Ahoy has been completed, giving us two quest points, 2400 per XP, the Ecto file, and we can now enter Port Phasmatis for free. Bringing our total quest points up to 99. I have never in the history of the game ever had 100 quest points. So we're finally going to get there in the next quest, which is going to be, oh, we got level 45 prayer as well. Very cool. Very cool. But the next quest we're going to be doing is, let me find it here, Making History. Another quest that I have never done that came out in 2005. Interesting. It says it's short. We'll see how short it really is. Oh no, I didn't realize till just now, but we no longer have the cool looking green ghost be amulet. I guess it goes back to normal. How unfortunate. I thought it looked really cool. And Making History has been started. It is yet another quest I have never done. And Making History has been completed, giving us three quest points, 1,000 prayer XP, 1,000 crafting XP, 750 GP, and the enchanted key. I'm not entirely sure what it is because I just powered through the quest. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we finally have over 100 quest points, which is amazing. It's really crazy to me seeing three digits in our quest points. As I said, I've never had over 100 in the entirety of this game being alive. And that's including RuneScape 3 as well. But we're not done yet. The next quest we're going to be doing is the Lost Tribe. Oh, we got 24 crafting as well. And it brought us up to 600 total level. Very nice. And as you could have guessed, the Lost Tribe has been started. Hey, and we just learned the Goblin Victory Salute and the Goblin Bow emotes. Eventually, all this stuff's probably going to be filled in in the future. Maybe except for the Explore emote because you need to complete 600 beginner clue scrolls to unlock that emote. But yeah, got the Goblin Bow and the Goblin Salute. And Lost Tribe's been completed, giving us 3,000 mining XP, a Ring of Life, Dorgish Unmine access, and one quest point. And a mining level of 23. So we went from 18 to 23, and we're very close to level 24 as well. And the next quest on the list is Death to the Dorgishun. So it turns out I need 23 thieving in order to do this quest. We only have level 22 right now. Not a big deal, only 536 XP away from 23. I'm just going to steal some teas from the tea stall until we get it. There's definitely a faster way to get this done, but I'm already here in Varrock, so I might as well do this. There we go, level 23 thieving. Now let's go get this quest done. All right, Death to the Dorgishan has been completed, giving us a quest point access to Dorgishkan. 2,000 thieving XP and 2,000 range XP, bringing our range level from 3 all the way up, 25 thieving as well, all the way up to 14 range. Not bad, not bad, but it is finally time to do my favorite quest when I was a kid. And like a minute and a half later, Elemental Workshop has been completed, giving us 5,000 crafting XP, 5,000 smithing XP, and the ability to make the Elemental Shield. Bringing our crafting level all the way up to level 29, we can now make emerald necklaces and our smithing level up to 35, and we can now make steel scimitars. Very, very nice. And here is the big reveal. Boom. I used to think this was so cool. I've never seen anything like it in the game until I became a member and saw this. It's just too bad that it's not very useful. And to be honest, it doesn't match many outfits. But that is where I am going to be ending the video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to drop a like below. If you made it all the way to the end and you haven't subscribed already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I'm aiming for 9,500 subscribers by mid-November. And with your support, I really think we can get there. And of course, thank you to everybody who is already subscribed. I respond to literally every comment I get in the comment section. But on my last video, for some reason, I would write a whole response to somebody, hit the reply button. And for some reason, it kept hiding my replies, even from me so it's almost like i'm shadow banned or something for some reason but the hearts still work so if i am not able to reply to your comment for some reason i will heart your comment if i read it but with that aside i hope that you guys enjoyed the video and i will see you in the next one